Hello and greetings from Iceland, where things are still a bit shaky, but I do also have some news about the activity in the Keldingadalur volcano, but first, the earthquake swarm by Mount Keilir. Some of our experts were saying before the weekend that this is either tectonic plate movements, while others said that this was indeed a magma intrusion, but the only thing we know for sure now is that the INSAR satellite data showed no deformation at all, but that was based on data from the day after the earthquakes started. And land uplift from a magma intrusion, it can take some days to reach the surface, according to our experts. And the next set of data from INSAR will be available in like one, two days. And that should confirm if this is a lava intrusion or plate movements. And we hope to hear about that soon, because the capital region is shaking every few hours now, and the time between the larger earthquakes around or over magnitude 3 has been shortening, and in total over 1000 earthquakes have been detected during this chapter. The earthquakes are still at 5-6 km depth, and around 15 of them measured over magnitude 3, most of them could be felt in the city, but the strongest one was magnitude 4.2. So this is how it looks or the last days on the earthquake graph. But uh, let's take those earthquakes and move them into a larger map. But it is a really good satellite photo that I'm using here, and it shows very well the different lava formations on the peninsula of different ages. And this is a map that I will use in my future projects when I'm showing you around from the drone in order to bring you closer all the way to the berries. But today I'm sticking to Mount Keller and some lava flow predictions. But there was this uh, evacuation exercise in this town uh, Vogar just a few days ago. And I want to remind you about uh, this older video of mine covering that town and the coastline. But the coastline is just a lava field from this uh, huge uh, shield volcano just west of uh, Mount Keller and the red dot is on top of its uh, crater. So this situation is taken very seriously. There are no ordinary forces that uh, build up mountains like this. And I have often asked if Keldingadalir isn't just a continuation of this old uh, volcano, Thráins uh, Skjöldur. And uh, this uh, volcano, Thráins Skjöldur, is just telling us that uh, there was this uh, powerful plumbing down to the mantle around 14,000 years ago, and what we can see now of Mount Keller is just the part of the mountain that is sticking up from the lava field of Thráinsöskjöldur. So what we have seen yet on the Reykjanes Peninsula is just a sample of the forces down there. And I am very curious about the pipelines under the peninsula, how they connect, what the triggers what, and such. Like with the Krisuvik volcanic system that stretches all the way into the capital region, but it is defined as a separate volcanic system, although it uh, did show signs of unrest before the eruption in Keldingadalir started. And uh, overall, I've always been hoping that uh, while I'm going after all the possible and uh, impossible information, it would bring me closer to understand the peninsula better. But as I move along, it's just more and more questions that pop up. But back to Keller. The earthquake pattern now, it looks very much like the beginning of the build-up to the Keldingadalir eruption. The red line is the location of the fissure coming from Mount Keller, two kilometers underground, or from where the magma found its way up to Keldingadalir. And I want to mention that yet another expert said that this fissure, which is on the plate boundaries, might just be readjusting after the eruption, and the magma is filling up the gaps. But Iceland is always on the move. One plate is moving to Europe and the other one to USA, meaning that the tickets to Iceland should be much cheaper in only few million years. And when we look at the red arrows, they are showing you roughly where we expect the lava to come down from Mount Keller or there around. And this is a quick view over that part of the highway that will go under lava. Most of you who have visited Iceland know this road, but less of you realize that you were driving over a shield volcano of a similar kind as uh, the Keltingadalir eruption has been forming little by little. So let's move on to Keltingadalir and ask what's happening there. We had some days now where we got very little information and I was very glad yesterday to see this interview with a volcanologist and he was asked, has the Keltingadalir eruption stopped? 
and uh, his reply was, no, it's still open for business, plenty of gas is coming up, and furthermore, it might still be pumping up some magma through the deeper down channels. The lava field has however sunk by 5 to 7 meters at its northern end by the crater, but it has risen in the south in Keltingendalir and uh, not Hagi Valley that are flying over now. But we are told that uh, this kind of transfer is normal. After all, we only see the top layer that the tourists are walking on. But uh, just beneath the hard shell they are walking on, we have liquid lava still moving. And the volcanologist that uh, was in this interview was asking himself there, might the earthquakes have something to do with a blocked channel up to Geltingatalir? But I was actually asking the same question in my last video and hoping that I would get an answer, but uh, not to hear the question repeated by uh, the experts. So the experts are teasing me again, as I'm trying to dig up every bit of information for my viewers. And this is not for the first time, nor the last, when I have to stay cool on a lava field. But I can understand our experts uh, up to a limit. They represent a science field called uh, Mother Earth, and uh, there are just cases when they have no clue about uh, what is going on. But I have the privilege to be able to speculate freely on my channel, but for scientists to do the same, it could backfire. Another reason for this hesitation to speak up might be that uh, they are scared, they might be wrong, but we had this uh, unlucky volcanologist telling it to the TV just hours before the Keltingatalir eruption that uh, the earthquakes would uh, turn into nothing. Nothing to see here, please! But, uh, as for that guy, I like him. He is trying. And while he is trying, the rest of us have something to talk about. But I can tell you though, that the volcano is still alive and it is breathing. And as far as I can understand, there is a good possibility that it will wake up again. But as for other possible scenarios, like the long fissure under there, might it cause an eruption uh, elsewhere? The worst case scenario is of course an uh, explosive offshore eruption, but I am preparing a video about uh, such cases by the South Coast. That will be online soon, and we also have this new webcam online. You can see it on YouTube, but I'm linking to it. And you can see Mount Kaler with Reykjavik in the background. I will also be posting updates in the video description if something happens before I upload my next update. But I'm also trying to get a new video online in the next one two days covering the mystery hills in Northern Iceland. And I suspect that the geology nerds will find that one very interesting. And uh, more about my plans, we had this uh, mudslides here in Northern Iceland for the last two days. It's the worst case of mudslides we have ever seen, but uh, luckily, no injuries, but the area remains closed. And as soon as it opens up again, I will go there with the drone and uh, show you some footage in best possible quality. That will be in only a few days. So it's plenty to do in the disaster department of my channel. And uh, please consider to subscribe for my future content. And I want to remind you that my merch store offers some easy ways to support my channel and uh, rescue the polar swan while you are at it. And uh, with that, I'm sending you best regards from a volcano island, Iceland.